My name is Barry Irwin. Um, hi, Bradley. Another Rhodes person here. Yay. Um, I'm at Rhodes University. I run the Security and Networks Research Group here. Um, what really made me happy today is the number of Rhodes people here. Rhodes people, stick your hands up in the air, please. There's a couple of you, and some of them have run away. Um, so having had my arm twisted here, so it's the, I'll do an impromptu lightning talk. Talking to Grant last night, he said, a, 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 <clears throat> yeah, that's what Grant said. <laughs> Consuming some malted beverages. Um, Grant was saying a lot of you, or talking to people, not a lot of people were really aware of the uh, security program that we run at Rhodes. Um, it's been running for quite some time. There's, you've actually seen three of our students today, uh, Veronica, Brent, and earlier this morning, Ibrahim. I'm talking on the, the AES crypto theft of, of a pie. Those are some of our students, but the, the big program that we run is a part-time master's program. And, sorry? Apparently it's called an evil MSC. <laughs> um, it's a program that is very much focused around bringing industry practitioners back into academia for a two-year period, and it's about building a sense of community as well. We've got a really nice group, and I think some of the people who've been on the course can attest to it. Um, you build a, you get to meet people that from other sectors and from around the country. But really, just to say, um, this is not a paid promotion. That, that, that is what I was meant to say, right? Uh, <laughs> um, we, at Rhodes, we do have a, a program. It's unfortunately full up for next year. Um, but, but uh, yeah, we've been full up every year. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll be, we'll be opening things again, sort of the second half of next year. Um, if, you've, if you sort of had an itch you want to scratch, um, if you're sitting in development or something and you would like to get into more type space, it might also be something that is um, worth doing. We've even had a lawyer come through. I promise to respect both lawyers and auditors. We're in a non-judgmental non space. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> yeah, we've had a couple of auditors through it, and they, they didn't feel too sad. Um, so really, that's that. Um, it's, a, it's a program. We've got another program which I can't talk about because it's not official yet, but it's a really exciting program that we'll also be launching for 2019, um, which should hopefully allow us to take a whole lot more. For those of you that have made a pile of money, your Bitcoin speculation has paid off, um, we would also love to have you as a full-time student. Um, come back and relive your glory days. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, do it. Um, we, we offer the, and there's the coursework MSc, so you come and do a number of different modules. Yeah, and then a I lose a mini. Veronica huffing and puffing in the front here. Um, the, or you can do it, actually, you can do it by full pieces. We've got a, quite a lot of the, the guys from Joburg have actually by full pieces over a two year period just doing. Anyway, that's me. I'm not going to monopolize the stage since I can see there's hundreds of people queuing up to see me or just to see, take over the stage. But I'm around if you wanted to have a chat. Um, otherwise, drop me a mail, find me on Twitter, etc. Thanks very much. So is there anyone else who would be keen to give a quick five-minute lightning talk? Barry? Friends, um, it's me again. Uh, so, while we're spamming events here, uh, we've got Black Hoodie, to, uh, Black Hoodie, not 2018 for next year. Uh, so, what is Black Hoodie? I just came back from it. Um, it's basically a malware reversing workshop slash conference for women and people who live their lives as women. Um, Actually, I think it's the same thing, sorry. Um, anyways, uh, so it was really cool. Um, I went there, and if you're really uh, interested in getting into malware reversing, so like x86 arm stuff, that's the beginner track, um, please do sign up. It's run by Marion Marshalek, who, who works for Intel as a malware analyzer. Um, and they've also got really great uh, conference talks. There was Azalea uh, with Azaria. Um, who was running a workshop on the advanced track. So if you're advanced malware analysis, like you should go there as well. 
um, as when as for where it is, it's usually in like it's like Europe. So if you have trouble getting there, you can sign up for a um, a travel grant. Um, and this year it was a lottery, so I was like, oh, if you don't enter a lottery, you're not going to win. But Google was like, you know, you get a travel grant, everybody gets a travel grant. So um, I would really encourage people to sign up. Um, it's it's a really great space with a lot of energy. Um, and especially like, you know, it, it was a really great space and I would like to see more South African or African women going there and, and representing us and doing us proud. So it would be really cool. It's not really a lightning situation. <laughs> but it's a data giving situation. Um, so we're giving away some gigabytes. Um, so I'm going to call out names and come get your data. If it's five gigs. No Sipo, so Jack. Oh, we have it's MTN data. Um, I've got an Altena Rathman. Jimmy Burgers. Jimmy. I think it's a Jermaine or uh, something. Jermaine? Jermaine, Jermaine. Jermaine's not here. Okay. The Jermaine? No? Grant Brown? Then. No, see, Paul. Got a, um, you know, MTN sponsors uh, South African rugby, right? And don't say anything negative about that. We do sponsor them. There is hope. We know there is. <laughs> okay, we've got some rugby jerseys to give out. Um, that's what I've got a jersey for you. Got a jersey for you. There you okay. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, thank you. All right. So, is there anyone else who's keen to talk about anything? Anyone at all? Yeah, you're welcome to. Ooh, we just said I can go over five minutes. That's very dangerous. <laughs> Except there's a lot of you. You can probably throw me out. Uh, so I'm busy doing some research. I don't know how it got approved. Uh, about zero days. And basically, the idea is that there are many classes of zero days that come out, and we can't actually defend against zero days. At least that's the typical thinking. Like, oh, there's a problem in the code, and now, well, okay, it's broken. So now we're going to get owned. Uh, and I think the idea is to try and reject that and say, like, what can we do? Uh, so it's more like defense in depth. And it's not just a problem in the code. It could be a problem in the firmware. It could be Intel management engine, etc. Hardware flaws, config flaws. They're not technically all zero days. At least in the strict definition of needing a code patch, like a config uh, mess up. Uh, the idea is to try and figure out, looking at existing the releases of zero days, like uh, the NSA and the CIA and uh, what are the hacking team guys, maybe even the CVE databases. They're like, these are the classes of problems that are coming out. And this is what we, if we'd known that this was going to come, we could have done this. Like, if we had a firewall which prevented the Intel management engine phoning home, then that might help. Uh, or disabling the Intel management engine, certain. Uh, Countries and governments have actually got this trusted computing program, and Intel will actually ship you or ship them at least boards and CPUs out uh, 
uh, email management engine, which is kind of a big clue that was never the best idea in the first place. Anyway, so if anyone wants to talk about zero days and preventing them and whatever auditing firmware and uh, putting, uh, going beyond the actual host, if that's where the problem is, like for example, in the management engine, you go beyond that, you firewall on, uh, or you have a route or a switch which is going to check the traffic, etc. Let me know because I'm very interested in it and it's quite quite interesting. Thanks. Okay, does anyone else have a lightning talk that they'd like to present? If not, we'll take about a 10 minute break and we'll set up for closing. Yep. I don't I don't have anything set up. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, I'll need a minute to get set up, but I'll give a quick lightning talk actually. <laughs> Um, I'm going to get started. Sorry for the long setup time um, and the terrible resolution. This isn't going to work too well, I don't think, but we'll give it a try. Um, so this is, uh, I'm, I'm doing the um, InfoSec Masters at Rhodes that Barry was um, mentioning uh, in his lightning talk. So for my research, what I did was take a um, piece of software that's about 10 years old. It was written at Rhodes um, University by another student in order to visualize um, network network traffic. Um, and it, it was written about 10 years ago, it was used there, and it wasn't really maintained, so it was a bit out of date. So for my research, I took this piece of software, updated it, added features, um, and, and all, all of that type of thing. Um, so if I can get this working, you can load up a packet capture file and basically uh, visualize that on that 3D cube. So, Is yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've loaded the packet capture, and this is going to be very difficult to do. Um, just setting it up quickly, so you can choose the home network, which is one of the one of the axes. You don't set that, then it um, doesn't really scale properly, and you don't see as much as you could have. So. See if I can. It's not going to work too well, is it? Yeah. So you can see on the bottom there. You can. Um, these points are basically uh, network events that are being plotted. So the the y-axis is the port. Um, this x-axis here is the destination address, and the z-axis going there, the red line, that's the source address. So typically, this would be like a port scan or something coming in from the internet into uh, this into a network. Um, and you can see you can rotate it and basically interrogate the data. And let's get the control panel back. And there are a lot of other things um, that make this tool useful. For example, you can speed it up to 120 times. And then you can actually see, like you can see port scans and port sweeps and things. That's what these lines represent. Um, the this plane at the bottom has ICMP packets. Um, they're just getting logged there in a two-dimensional fashion, so there's no differentiation um, between the different types of ICMP there, but yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, that's the basic functionality. There's a lot of customization you can actually do. For example, you, um, you can choose how long you want points to be displayed on the screen for. The default is one day. If you drop it down to an hour, for example, um, you'll see less. Um, you should see less, depending how big this packet capture file is. I just chose one at random, basically. You put it down to, you, you can actually see as I change it, what the point, number of points displayed on the cube drop. Um, I mean, like, if you're looking at very long, very large packet captures that are going over multiple months, you can use that to you know, filter out the data and get rid of the noise and what you're not interested in looking at. Um, yeah, it, it can do a lot of other stuff, but basically, and it can replay at a really high speed, for example, like that. And if I press, you can make it spin, one of the new features that it got during my research, contributed by uh, someone at Rhodes as well. Um, but 
that's basically what it what it does.